Hey, yo, what is going on you guys? Kyle Hanjo here and welcome back to the episode of Hiraya. In this episode, we're going to start building the old city. We are going to be building the core, the center, and the seat of the British colony in the Philippines. In the lore of the series, anyway. If you haven't followed the series, you can check out episode 1 where I explained it in detail. But to cut the story short, this is a fictional city located in Cebu if Cebu was a British colony. It's gonna be taking inspiration from Singapore, Hong Kong, and other coastal cities all around the world. It might even take inspiration from America, Japan, I don't know, whatever flows into my head. But I'm still going to be basing it off of Cebu and its history. And to show you guys that, this part here is where the fort, uh, there's a fort in Cebu, uh, a Spanish fort right here. I mean, right here. If I look at the map, it's gonna be that triangle right there. And this is a later expansion of the park right here. So this is going to be a big, huge park, as you can see with the paved roads. But that's not the focus of this episode. The focus of this episode is building up the civic center. This is going to be the civic square at the heart of the old city, featuring Basilica Minore of Santo Nino, Subbu City Hall, and a park in between them where Magellan's Cross is actually located. But I couldn't find it. It was an asset, but it was quite ugly, so I didn't use it. So you'll see later on what we did with this plaza. There's also Galleria Vittoria there at the north. I think I don't know which is north but basically on top of the screen as you can see that is an indoor shopping mall in Italy inspired by the same one in Italy I'll be changing it to Galleria Victoria because this is a British colony and also because Queen Victoria so yes beside the church there will also be a university but those two the Galleria and the university are for later episodes in this episode we're going to be focusing primarily on the church the city hall and the plaza at the center so here i've already started building as you can see i'm changing the roof of this building because i'm not necessarily a fan of the green roof and i wanted to have a unified roof in this in the core of the city for a unified look and feel because later on you'll see after a few minutes you'll see that the roof colors of the buildings are quite everywhere so i ended up going with warmer tone roofs like oranges and reds but for the most important buildings like the more important ones i'm going to be going for a redder hue because the orange of this asset is not giving the orange like those buildings you can see on the side so i decided to just change it into a red so because i think red fits a little bit better because Malacanang also has a red roof and it's either red or green like the darker green are the roofs generally found here in the Philippines so I'm using procedural objects to change the color of this roof this is a thigh asset by Palm's Time it's, I think it's a university asset and I've been using this extensively in my previous series as well in Magayon so if you guys want to check that out the link is down below and speaking of Malacanang uh, palace i also built that there but of course with the magayon twist and with any series that i make there's always a twist and as you can see here with uh, hiraya it's a british colony but yeah i also am going to be changing the color of the roof of the other buildings and it's just a simple process of just tweaking the size of these um, buildings using procedural objects so that it fit in whatever you want and the way to keep the roof only is to merge the vertices into one as you can see right there and yeah if you guys want a better tutorial on how to use procedural objects i don't think i'm the guy to teach you guys that but if you guys want you can comment them down below if you want a tutorial on how to use procedural objects but i'm telling you there are a lot of people better at explaining things if you might have noticed i am very bad at explaining but yeah here i'm connecting the uh, main church and the convent using these this amazing asset this is actually a factory but it fits the vibe it serves the purpose and yeah here we are now focusing on the city hall yes the next important building after the church the heart of democracy so as you can see here from the preview that i first use the san francisco city hall but the architecture of san francisco city hall was built during the late 1800s it is a lot more ornamentation ornamentated it's a, it has a lot more ornamentation to it and it's giving rich energy but 
colonial like settlements, British colonial settlements like Singapore weren't actually rich until you know, Singapore was just you know newly rich. It was just recently rich, and they did that on their own. I mean, the British did uh, their part, but you know how colonialism is. It's never good. But anyways, to get back on the video, this is a city hall. It's in this weird um, angle right here. So I had to use procedural objects to fit it in. I also changed the color of the roofs, as you can see. And this is the Washington state capital, the state of Washington's capital, not the capital in Washington, D.C., but the state rather. So they actually have a dome, but I didn't want to have a dome because once again, we're not rich. Uh, we're poor at this time. I mean, we're not that rich. As you can see, we can still build this type of building here. It means we have we got money, but the architecture is a lot less adorned and a lot more neoclassically and just plain and simple, like semi-modern type of thing. And I'm also using this to have this like triangle once again on the sides. This one will be facing the Independence Plaza, which I'll be building in a later episode. Uh, a lot of you guys have suggested that I should rebuild that to its original state. And I might take inspiration from its original state, but still applying the Magayon Touch. I'm just going to be calling it the Magayon Touch. Anything that I touch in series canvas is the Magayon Touch. So yeah, I'm also connecting the roofs of these things. Procedural objects are is such an amazing tool. If you guys want to create more custom buildings and custom builds, procedural objects are the way to go and you'll be seeing a lot more procedural objects in this series because i love that but sometimes we can get a little bit too much into the detail that we forget the bigger picture which is why this episode has been delayed for over two weeks but anyways finally we finished the foundations of the buildings not only the foundations the walls the roof the everything and now we're going to be focusing on the detail and the infrastructure around those buildings and if you guys have watched the live stream live stream the live stream prior to the release of the series you might be familiar with these buildings that suddenly popped up out of nowhere so these have been placed prior to building these i had a trial run a test run for how the series would look like and i just decided to just keep these because it's a waste of time and i also want to see you know i want to get the vibe of what this would feel like if it was all if it was already built up and yeah here we have the main road it's supposed to be four lanes but it gets narrow in some places like i went to google maps and the roads here there are basically buildings covering the roads i think the buildings were here the road was narrow and then they widened it but they can't break the building so they just yeah i'm going to be doing a road diet here instead of a four lane road this is actually a two-way road with bike lanes on each side and parking on each side as well but with a very narrow sidewalk so i wanted to improve walkability here by widening the pedestrian way the sidewalk the pavement by removing the parking on each side only in this segment though because i want to have some parts of the city to still have parking roadside parking so here at the church the basilica i'm covering up the ugly texture of this building by using pavement surfaces and using decals to place over those surfaces because i can't place decals on buildings i can only place them on the ground or on ploppable surfaces here on the side i'm also adding in some trees here and there and a gate in front of the church so this is going to be the main gate that's going to be like in front of the entrance and we're going to be having side gates of course on the side because where's the side it's anyways so yes we're also adding fences here and i've used uh intersection marking tool i started to play around with the new features and it has been amazing if you might get some you might see some of those later on like if you look at instead of like what you're seeing like on the sides you see that i've actually played with it actually with the boulevard at the side of the water but yes this decal right here uh i changed the pathways to invisible ones and just used this decal to detail it because it's a lot cleaner it has sharper textures and it just looks quite nice and here to give life to this plaza in front of the church i placed down some uh, crowd generators so that people can like you can see people just standing about and it gives this place a bit of life and here on the side i'm 
once again, I'm using intersection marking tool to use these networks so that I wouldn't be having too many networks in the city. Instead, I can give it off to intersection marking tool to handle the detailing. And I think that is quite nice. It's an amazing feature and I love it. So also adding in more trees here on the side. And then later on, I'll be back going back to the landscaping. But here I am using the decals once again to give this place a bit more of an importance. You know, it's giving it a higher status than everybody else. Like the pavement textures are already customized and it looks like it's stone as you can see here. But I want to give it a bit more of a like bougie aesthetic. You know, it's a lot more special than other places in the city because all the pavement textures in the city is going to look like that. But I want this to be a lot more important. So I'm using the decals here to customize that. And this road is a pavement road, a pedestrian walkway. The lights are at the center, so I didn't like that. So I just removed it using network skins and placed it back down using intersection marking tool, which is once again, amazing. And I'm going to be banning cars from using that because it's a pedestrian street. A pedestrian street should only be for pedestrians and not cars. That's going to be a shared street. But anyways, getting back to this, you might have noticed that it, Plaza Subbu is taking shape. And on the north there, we already have uh, Galleria Victoria because I built that in a live stream before. And I don't know if I should, you know, show you guys how it's built because it's just very simple. Maybe I'm going to show you guys later on the live play how it happened or maybe a next episode. We never know. But I have a lot of plans and sometimes I get too excited that I leave things behind. But anyways, this is the shape of the plaza itself. It's just basically a very walkable, very open. I'm thinking that it was completely like covered in cement or like completely paved over but they decided to remodel it to become a lot more green but later you'll see that it will just could be completely paved over but yeah this is what i'm talking about of using decals to improve the aesthetic of your builds so i'm using this decal so that people have like it has um outlines like squares so it feels like they are huge tiles but they're not they're just pavement decals but i think they are I don't know. Hit me up in the comment if they're actually tiles. Now the problem with having a very, you know, a, not very, just a weird angle, like not square, is that you have some spaces which you have to be creative with to find solutions on how to uh, fill in the emptiness of it. So here beside the city hall itself, I decided to place some elevated um, areas outside like kind of a balcony but i don't think it is i uh, i saw this video about the um new york city public library because they have this so that is the inspiration and here i widened the stairways to be able to fit into a tile a single tile of those custom decals and here i'm using these network trees network planters which has trees and shrubs already in them and you can change them easily which I'll show you guys later but yeah you have to be careful with how you place them because you can't flip them like easily with rows like changing direction you have to replace them and thankfully we have move it to make this step easier i'm also going to be adding in like a fence on the side so that people don't fall over a barrier or whatever and here it's just this this corner here is an amazing example of fitting in this place love like this thing perfectly fitting in you know you don't have to put too much detail here because i essentially would have gone overboard but this this is like a nice like middle ground for finding a solution on how to do deal with awkward angles and yes once again using the decals which is amazing I'm also going to be adding in here on this corner. We have to make it very accessible. I'm thinking that people can just sit down, relax, and have a coffee here. But because the city hall, I'm not sure if the city hall should still be functional. I'm thinking that it could have been a museum because the city will be expanding. You know, it will be very huge. And I think this would just be a museum now and a historical site. But yeah, we are now here back at the plaza. And I'm going to be using planters here on the side 
these are the same as the networks but instead they are buildings or parks rather and you can really see how much people are how many people are walking here because this is a very pedestrian visibility road a pedestrian visibility that's it i'm just going to be calling it pedestrian visibility and i'm adding in some trees here as well and yeah i guess this is we're also already nearing the end of this episode so just a reminder but we will be going back into the live play so the trees were added in later or i think they are older trees that grew to become bigger they were placed here hundreds of years ago and now they're that big but we're going to be adding in more trees as you can see improve the landscaping and adding in water features to cool down the space so that looks nice doesn't it i decided to change the paved roads into a bit more of a you know cleaner look uh, a more like so that water can pass through easily instead of completely paving it over it has holes that allows grass to grow so this is where the video the time lapse and where i build some detailing here at the convent and i'll be going into the live play to explain to you guys the build in more detail and welcome to the live play this is now the civic square all complete as you can see it's finished and we actually have more things that we'll, we've built off camera here on the left and here on the right here on the right you might have seen this already if you watched a previous live stream before i like officially released the series we have the old downtown right here well it would have been like this this i took direct inspiration from cebu here and worked with how much assets were available to me so these buildings cebu is just made mostly of these buildings like two to three story buildings and you might see a big building here and there but this is essentially what the height of the buildings are um this is like very much cebu-ish there should be a gasoline station there but i might place a gasoline station somewhere else yeah, some appreciation for the past build i've done i'm not going to be changing this anymore this might change in the future but for now i'll keep it as is this is a remnant of a previous version of hiraya but i think it still fits you know a bit of history so here is the plaza this is the view of the plaza as you can see some of the buildings are not connected but let's just turn off the notification so that you don't see it. It looks very... It's complete. It's all done. I'm not going to be detailing this anymore. Maybe adding more trees here to cover the space so that it would be shady. Because in the Philippines, it's very hot. And I really wouldn't want to be walking along this like path. Because it's just too hot. And Plaza Subbu in real life actually has a lot of trees i just kept them i just removed it because it looks better here but if this were to be placed in reality we would be covering this up you know would you rather walk on a wide paved road with the sun beaming on your head i don't think so so here let's first uh show you i'm gonna first show you guys where we first started the best way to go around the place is of course in first person so let's do that Oop, I just got into a building. Look at how beautiful this is. Everybody's walking. Okay, first let's address the road. This is going to be the main road. We have two lanes, bike lane, parking, and a sidewalk. So I want some spaces to have wider sidewalks. So I removed the parking and added a hedge here for a safer um, experience. Or I think the hedge should be actually here between the bikes and the road but the road you know i'm working with what we got yes we have a main entrance here in front of it and we have a side entrance here as well and this one goes into the convent Ooh. the way i designed this convent is i took inspiration we have, i actually went to one beside our church and it looked like this so i just derived it the design of this place from there and there should be like graves here, but I can't be bothered with detailing. Let's imagine that they are like, it's like kind of a cemetery there. And this is like, you know, there's a fountain here. Yes, amazing. It looks very European. This angle right here, it's very European. And we love that because we're trying to get the colonial aesthetic, the prime colonial aesthetic. Here we have the like main offices type of thing. 
there's like offices and then i think the people living here stay there okay let's first go here i've actually aligned these they all are perfectly aligned as you can see it's all aligned this entire road here is aligned with that road so you can see this is perfectly aligned you can see this bollard bollard oh it, you can close it the bollard the gate the pathway and the door and even the building as you can see i uh, i'm just I'm so amazed by myself <laughs> wow anyway so let's follow this tourist here crossing the street because you know the southeast asia there are not many white people here this church is um, from paraguay as you can see and this is the closest to architectural style the architectural style of the actual church here this plaza in front of the church is uh, actually has seats on the side so that people can sit down outdoor mass so that the capacity more people can are able to attend now let's go into the side ex side entrance the entrance to the convent and let's just take a quick stroll let's imagine oh look we have fountains i have placed tons of fountains i really want to improve uh to put uh, an importance on water uh in this series water is going to be a, an integral part into the series so you're going to see that quite well okay let's just walk slowly and here we are this is the city hall or if this were like the um thing like colonial this would be the colonial outpost like this is where the governor of this colony lives or something i don't know what you call the people part basically the british east indies headquarters would be that repurposed into a city hall and i think this would be a museum now because city hall would be placed somewhere else where it can handle the much larger city that we'll be building in later episodes once again the water features water is very important cycling as well a lot of people are cycling love that these lamps i'm in love with these lamps the amount of uh, ornamentation it adds to the place and also this building it would have been a lot more detailed and you know flowery but i decided to keep it more um less ornamentation ornamentated is that even a word i don't know the scale of this series as compared to Magayot is a lot more realistic. We have two lions here on the side. Yes, symbolizing uh, strength and integrity. <laughs> I don't know. If you guys have any things to suggest what those lions symbolize, I just took inspiration from the National, uh, the New York City Public Library for this one. So make do with that information. Here we have an elevated like part of the plaza. Right, uh, I haven't detailed it because if we detail places too much, we would be lagging. So, so very, very. So I just avoided that. I'm using tricks to put as much detail in the city without losing frame rate. Once again, water. I love this. We have jets going up. It's a lot of pressure, as you can see. We have humidity. Steam. It's not steam. It's like water vapor. Yes. Oops. Before we get there, let's start here on the side. Okay. So we do have Magellan's Cross. It's supposed to be like right here at that intersection of the tiles right there but i decided to put something similar instead into here let's just imagine that this is kind of like holy isn't it it's giving christian energy and this is amazing wow it's my first time going in first person by the way after like three weeks of building this on and off and this asset is just amazing let's just sim let's just i think the symbolism here is that um this is the colonizer uh saving the people <laughs> you know how they try to rewrite history that they are like the white man's burden and then we were like saved from ignorance and stuff and they're here to save us well i don't think that would still be here but yes i think this would be a later edition the people standing up to the oppressors it can be open to interpretation either way we're getting uh, we're getting lost we're getting sidetracked again but yes this plaza is such an amazing place to be and here if we walk through this wide road we have the new york the washington arch in new york which turns into galleria vittorio in italy but it's gonna be galleria victoria as i've said because you know british colony and yes that's still a work in progress i you've already seen this if you've watched the live stream but the archways and the like corners the in the in the, in the like corridors outside like this thing you already have a sidewalk and you still have another corridor 
for the buildings i'm gonna be using that because people would walk here if it's too hot because it's literally too hot so they'd rather walk here and we have shops there let's just imagine that there are actually shops there and yes we have another like uh section of the plaza here which has this gorgeous fountain the fountain of peace I'm basically throwing names out into the wind right now. But if you guys any have suggestions on the lore for what these things symbolize, I would gladly appreciate it. Because I, for sure, can think of things, but I want the community to also have their part. Because Rome wasn't built in a day. I don't know how that connects to this, but I just want you guys to participate in this journey that I'm embarking on. So yes, those are the two plazas. Or the two like features of this plaza and also the center one this is the view if you're coming down from the city hall you see the um i think this would have been the spanish city hall like because the priests actually are like part of like the ones ruling there's no no separation of church and state and when they were separated the british were like let's build a bigger one over here and also the bridge is behind it amazing I don't know why, but those pillars, they should be there, the ones below. It should be only those two big ones holding it. Oops, this is just a placeholder. I don't know if the downtown is going to be there, but yes. Going back down, I just love it here. You know, it looks good, but it's very hot. If this was in real life, you'd be sweating right now. Like, no joke. So, I'm going to be covering this up in trees. Okay, why don't we just get give you guys why don't i just give you guys a preview of how much how better it would look like without trees i mean you wouldn't be able to see those but at least it would be uh cooler and warmer here i won't be placing trees i'm thinking that it's going to be like similar to those in like um what countries uh south saudi arabia in the arab countries where they have like uh, imagine this right this lamp post it's like an umbrella and it can open and then it can form like a hexagon. Here's just a picture. Yes, this is what it looks like. It's amazing. And I'm planning on doing that here, but we don't have the assets. So that's just sad. Let us now use the power of the intersection marking tool to give us the shade that we need. What trees do we are we going to use? I think this one. This one is also, I use the same technique here. Let us copy the tree. And let us add another rule and let us add trees intersection marking tool is one of the best mods ever in city skylines it literally changed the game if you know what i mean because the mechanics they it made it better um let's place one here as well and that with that we can copy it and place it here yes that's amazing and also place it here let us now go down and I'm going to show you how big of a change it makes. You can still see the arch from afar. You don't really have to see it because when you're walking, you wouldn't remember the view. You would just remember the heat because I went to Manila and all I remember is the heat and the traffic and the trash. Oh, an airplane. Anyways, we're getting sidetracked. Look at the amazing thing that the trees have. So that is the plaza, the civic center of the city. We still have other things to be building in the city, like this one. This still needs to be cleaned up. We have this huge park here. I think it would be this entire thing. This entire second farm from this road into this. This would be a big park. This would have been the old, like, avenue. And they reclaimed the land for this wide boulevard. I'm still going to be changing this into a much wider one because I'm going full on Singapore here, like with very wide roads. It is gonna be the boulevard. I might place a tram line on it or even a metro line. I'm not sure. If you guys have any suggestions on what to build, hit me up in the comments. But here, I think the next episode would be either here or here or maybe both. So this is, we're gonna be having like a Chicago style, huge park here. So stay tuned for that. 
If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, comment down below what you want to see next, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to show your support to the channel even more, consider becoming a patron and get exclusive content, early access, and so much more. A huge shout out to CJ Newton for supporting this channel, and supporting me on Patreon allows me to keep on making these videos. And I actually get most of the revenue from Patreon rather than YouTube. But if you can't support me on Patreon but still want to help the algorithm find this channel, consider giving it a like and comment thing what you think of this video that is all that i have for you guys today this is kind of signing off bye